Number eight seed Sergei Karatanov with a win could move on and face Semi Shilt in the quarterfinals. That's how sick this tournament is. Sergei Karatanov, three wins, two losses as a professional kickboxer, but of course, mostly an MMA fighter. He's got a 19 and five MMA record. Karatanov is the favorite in this fight against Rico Verhoven, minus 250. Verhoven, 37 wins, six losses, one draw. He is plus 170, the underdog. Karatanov. Coming off a first-round knockout win over Mark Miller in Russia on March 23rd of this year, while Verhoeven coming off a decision victory over a 41 and 11 fighter named Hezdi Georges on June 30th in Belgium. Haritanov, all three wins in his pro kickboxing career come via knockout, including a knockout of Mighty Mo Seligia in uh, 2011. While Verhoeven has 29 of 37 wins via decision with eight knockouts. Verhoeven has lost six times in his career, four via decision, twice via knockout. Uh, Both guys that knocked out Verhoeven are in this tournament. Jamal Ben Sadiq in the tournament. He beat him in 2011 and Errol Zimmerman knocked him out on January 28th of this year. Verhoeven, 23 years old from the Netherlands. He's been fighting since 2004. Sergei Haritanov, 32 years old, originally from Russia, but trains in the Netherlands with Team Golden Glory. He's been fighting as a mixed martial artist since 2000, but has been fighting as a pro kickboxer only since 2009, but has picked up wins in MMA via knockout over Andre Arlovsky, Semi Schilt, and Alistair Overeem. Um, it's a very interesting bout. Very interesting bout, and the fact that Haritanov has knocked out Semi Schilt in MMA makes... The next bout, I think, even more interesting. I'm taking Sergey Karatanov to beat Rico Verhoeven, and I can't wait when the number eight seed Sergey Karatanov faces the number one seed Semi Schilt in the quarterfinals in a rematch from their mixed martial arts bout, where Karatanov picked up a knockout win. I mean, that that could be a big win in the second round for Sergey Karatanov. We're gonna go round by round, though. We're gonna pick the opening round fights, and then. We'll tell you who we think is going to win this entire tournament. But uh, I'm going to go with Sergei Haritanov to beat Rico Verhoeven. I'm not going to disagree with you. I realize that Verhoeven has a lot more experience on his side with 44 uh, pro kickboxing bouts uh, as opposed to Haritanov's five. Nonetheless, I think Haritanov, you know, coming off a win, uh, a knockout win in March. Uh, he's training full-time stand-up right now uh, with and the Glory promotion is kind of a subdivision of the Golden Glory team. So I have a strong feeling that Haritanov has been working mainly as stand-up and has that knockout power as we know. And I look for him to go to the second round and face Semi Shilt. My goodness, what a quarterfinal that's going to be. Let's move on to another... Round of 16 bout Rao Mauru, a uh, Korean fighter that is pretty much ungoogleable. I tried to look <laughs> look stuff up about this guy. Nothing. There's nothing about this guy other than he's a heavyweight. He's Korean. He's not even on the official webpage for this tournament. GloryWorldSeries.com. Rao Mauru is not even on the page. Every fighter in this tournament is on that page except for this Rao Mauru guy. So he's got an unknown record. All I know is that he's an underdog at plus 400 because he takes on the number two seed in this tournament, 76 wins, 15 losses, minus 600 the favorite, Mr. Gokan Saki. Gokan Saki, if you haven't heard of him, he's an absolute beast, 29 years old. Uh, His parents were from Turkey. He's born in the Netherlands. He's been fighting as a professional since the year 2000. He's on a two-fight win streak. This guy has 53 knockout victories, 53 of his 76 via knockout with 23 decision wins. He has been knocked out, though, 10 times for 15 losses, including knockout losses to Remy Bonyaski, Alistair Overeem, and Badr Hari, Saki 15 uh, losses, five of those also via decision, including losses to Peter Ertz and Kiyotaro. Saki, though, does have big wins over Daniel Gita, who's in this tournament, Tyrone Spong, uh, Morad Muzidi, who's also in this tournament, Bryce Guidon, who we just talked about, Ray Seffo, and 
Melvin Manhoof. Uh, I'm going to go with Gokan Saki. I really don't know much about Rao Maru. Maybe he's a dark horse, uh, this Korean fighter, but I don't think so. I'm going to go with Gokan Saki. Odds makers love him. I'm going to take him to win and uh, move on into the quarterfinals. Can't, can't disagree with you on that, considering we have no information uh, on Maru, then it's kind of hard to really go with him in this tournament. I'm going to go with Gokan Saki to uh, advance into the quarterfinals and take on the winner of the next matchup. Wow, the next matchup, Anderson Silva versus Igor Djukovic. No, not that Anderson Silva. It's uh, Anderson, they call him Braddock da Silva. He's uh, a Brazilian, but different dude. I guess, you know, we all know Silva is a pretty common name, so you got to figure there'd be another fighter named Anderson Silva. Uh, this guy is the seventh seed in the tournament, 32 wins, eight losses. He takes on 45-5, and five. Igor Djurkovic. Uh, this is a virtual pick em fight, though. Djurkovic unseated, but this one minus 125 either way. Silva coming off a majority decision loss to Remy Boniaski on October 6th in Belgium, while Djurkovic coming off a second-round TKO victory over 75-15 and 15 Gregory Tony on October the 6th on that same card in Belgium. Silva, 32 wins, 22 of those via knockout with 10 decisions. Djurkovic, 45 wins, 29 via knockout with 16 decisions. Uh, Silva, 8 Losses all via decisions, uh, including two to Buzidi in 2010. He lost to Badr Hari on May 27th in Spain. That was actually the great Badr Hari's last fight before going to jail. Neither of these men has ever been knocked out, as Djurkovic has lost five times, all via decision. So both these guys have lost, but all via decision, never been knocked out. Djurkovic, 27 years old, from Croatia. Silva, 26 years old, from Brazil, but trains in the Netherlands with Peter Ertz. Both of these men will be making their Japanese debuts. And they have both been fighting as professionals since 2005. Djurkovic versus Silva. Uh, this is a tough fight to pick uh, for me. Oddsmakers don't know where to go. I don't really know either. I, I would side with uh, Silva, but Djurkovic... You know, you can't ignore this guy, especially considering this is a, an event put on by the Golden Glory team. It's called Glory 4, and uh, Djurkovic trains with that team. So you got to figure maybe he's one of their guys that will do well, but Anderson Silva is uh, seated in this tournament. And no, again, not the UFC fighter. This is a different guy named Anderson Silva. I'm going to go with Anderson Braddock Silva uh, on this virtual pick em fight. For the fact that he went the distance with Remy Bonyansky and it was a majority decision where one judge saw it another way. So with that being said, I'm going to go with 32-8 and eight Anderson Braddock Silva with 22 knockouts. How can you ever go against a guy named Anderson Silva, right? And this guy's <laughs> like 6'10". Yeah, he's a gigantic dude. I'm going to go with Anderson Silva as well to move on into the quarterfinals and... Uh, he may face a rematch, as uh, it's possible, Remy Bonyaski, the guy that Anderson Silva fought in his last bout. Bonyaski could be his opponent in the second round of this tournament, as Bonyaski, 77 wins, 11 losses. He's the fourth seed in this tournament. He takes on, on Philip Verlinden, and the winner of this fight will take on the winner of Djurkovic and Silva. So, uh, 